Argentina was the first country in the world outside of the Soviet Union to fully nationalize its oil industry or to form an oil company that did everything from searching for oil, um, taking it out of the ground, and all the way to putting it in people's cars. And for, so for seven decades, the state was central to organizing how the oil industry happened. And then it went through a very dramatic privatization in the early 1990s, where this state oil company, it wasn't the only company working in Argentina, but it was very much um, in charge of the oil industry in general. It went through this very dramatic privatization. Um, and the sort of end result of that is the company was sold to Repsol, this Spanish company. And this week, um, the Argentine Congress approved a bill that the president had submitted um, to renationalize it, so to buy back the shares from Repsol, 51% of the company will now, the shares will be owned by the government of Argentina. So that's what happened this week. Um, it's important in a number of different ways. There's been a lot of discussion in the news about a government kicking out a foreign corporation. Um, I think that's a real misunderstanding of what has gone on there. It's still a corporation. 49% uh, of the shares are still owned by something other than the government. But the government is taking a stake, buying a stake from Repsol. Repsol's unwilling to be selling it, <laughs> but um, it is still a sale um, in order to have greater control over what happens because oil is so fundamental to not only the economy, but everyone's way of life. Um, and that's really what I focus on as an anthropologist, is understanding the connections between um, the oil industry, which can seem very large and distant and abstract from people's lives, and people's individual personal lives, their relationships, and seeing how these two things are, are interconnected in many ways. My book, um, it's called Resources for Reform, Oil and Neoliberalism in Argentina, looks at how um, the globalized oil industry interacts with people's lives, people's everyday lives, their personal relationships, their sense of self, their identities. Um, and there's usually an assumption that the oil industry is, is so big that it impacts people and people have no impact upon it. And it's about complicating that relationship, that it's not only an impact, but that the oil industry is people um, in many ways, and people who are cooperating in a process that's much larger than themselves, that they do not have control over. To say that it, it is people isn't, doesn't mean that any individual can remake it in the way that they want, but to understand the ways in which um, people's desires, people's dreams, people's hopes, people's relationships with their family have an impact on the way that the oil industry um, operates, the way, it, the way oil is extracted, sold, commercialized, all of that. The vote this week to renationalize the oil industry is, on the one hand, is part of a larger process of moving away from some of the economic models that were very um, prevalent in the 1990s in terms of increasing foreign investment, um, decreasing government control over economic decisions. So in some ways it is absolutely um, a reversal of some of those policies, but it's not going to revolutionize um, the oil industry in Argentina. It's not going to immediately change people's daily lives in a big way. Um, it is an opportunity for more of the wealth that's generated by the oil industry to stay in Argentina. Because when Repsol was in charge, it um, was uh, a lot of the investment was leaving, a lot of the, the profits from the company were leave, was leaving the country. And so that will definitely change. Um, when the oil industry was managed by the government, it was managed not only in order to produce oil, obviously, it's an oil company, but also to provide middle class jobs, um, to provide fuel for other industries in Argentina. And the government has, um, a greater interest in using the oil industry in this kind of strategic way um, to provide fuel for citizens and for um, industries in Argentina um, that Repsol wasn't so interested in doing. Um, so in that way, I think it's um, a step towards trying to um, 
improve the economy in Argentina for a larger group of people rather than just increase GDP, um, have more people able to benefit from the natural resources that are in Argentina. So we see a larger trend to, to question the um, wisdom that's been sent to Argentina or given to Argentina and the rest of South America for a long time that foreign investment is always better, corporations are always able to manage things better. And the evidence isn't, isn't holding up for that. Um, so I think it's a significant step. It's a, it's a big step, but it's not out of line with a lot of other things that are happening in South America right now. You hear the word expropriation and Americans get very nervous because we very much um, are invested in ideas of personal property and you own what you own and it's yours and you have complete control over it. That's a fairly unusual idea if we look around the world across time, this really strong understanding of ownership. So Americans are very threatened by the idea that a government can take away what, what someone believes is theirs. Um, but I think that if you get beyond the rhetoric of the words of expropriation and look at what's happening, it's not actually very threatening. Um, what's happening is that the oil industry is so fundamental to the economy and to the society as a whole, the government wants more control over it. And that's not a threat to capitalism. That's not a threat to foreign investment overall. And there's actually an opportunity, um, there's a possibility at least of it improving the economic situation in Argentina so that there are greater possibilities for foreign investment, for business and all these other ways because oil is so fundamental. It's not like other industries in that in order for all these other industries to operate they need to have a steady supply of oil. And the historical record has shown that foreign corporations have not been particularly good at um, providing that for countries like Argentina. One thing that it's important to understand is, um, is this idea that oil is not a commodity like other commodities. It's not just something that's equivalent to money and we buy and we sell for merely rational economic reasons, right. that it's so caught up in our ideas about progress and ideas of what it means to have a modern life um, that, it, that we need to pay attention to its symbolic meaning and the ways that oil um, represents um, national progress, individual achievement, all of these things um, make it not something that, um, that operates in the same way as any other commodity.